thanks everyone for joining us today. Uh, just a quick disclaimer, this presentation is for educational purposes only. It's not legal advice, um, does not create an attorney-client relationship, unless of course you're already our client. Uh, we'll have some information at the end on contacting us if you have any specific questions on this presentation. Also, so you can get on with your day-to-day, -day, we'll move through this information rather quickly as Dan had uh, mentioned. So our topic today is diversity, equity, and inclusion in the workplace, uh, frequently referred to as DEI. And I'm sure we've all heard that term, um, especially in the last few years. So what is diversity, equity, and inclusion at work? Well, really it relates back to affirmative action and equal employment laws from the 1960s. Um, those laws have prohibited discrimination in employment based on application or based on an applicant or employee's race, sex, national origin, and religion. So these core protections under equal employment opportunity have been in place for basically 60 years. Um, later, that's been expanded to cover age, disability, other protected characteristics. Some examples of the laws, and these are things that many of us, if not all of us, have heard, have heard of before, um, would be Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, the Americans with Disabilities Act, the ADA, and the Age Discrimination and Employment Act, the ADEA. So workplace DEI programs aim to promote more fairness in the workplace. And if you think about it, diversity and inclusion programs have been around for quite a long time. Um, that goes back probably 20, 25 years at least where people have been talking about diversity and inclusion. So maybe even like 30 years. But equity is the newest component of that equation and that's been added much, much more recently um, into the mix. So what is the purpose of DEI? Well, it expands on the laws that we had just discussed with the purpose of trying to help applicants and employees from different backgrounds feel welcome and supported in their workplace. Um, it, you know, it, it aims to um, increase representation of different groups in the workplace. Um, so you think of people of different ages, maybe from different countries, um, different religions, things along those lines relating to protected class um, to expand that representation level in the workplace. Um, and the employer can also use their policies, their practices, and their procedures to, to further DEI goals. So that's basically the uh, purpose of having a program um, at an employer's workplace. So what are some of the goals of those employers who have a DEI program in place? What do they want to accomplish with this specific plan? Well, one of those is to attract and retain talent. So many workers want a DEI conscious workplace. So in response, employers, if they hear from applicants or employees that they want that, type of program, the employers are saying, huh, well, if I need to bring people in or I want to retain people, I might want to um, consider putting that type of program in place. Another goal is to increase employee satisfaction, morale, and productivity. Um, some employees might feel more happy with their job if their workplace is aware of DEI. They have a program, the workers think, oh, this is good. This is an important issue to me. I, I, I like this employer. Um, another goal of a DEI program at work is to drive innovation and creativity. Generally, this involves um, allowing input and participation um, from employees across kind of a broad spectrum of backgrounds with different perspectives, maybe some different life experiences. The hope or the thought of employers is that that could lead to improved financial performance and maybe profitability. Um, Certainly enhanced public image is a uh, goal of a workplace DEI program. Some employers may feel they look better publicly if they have a DEI program in place. That's especially true uh, with larger businesses. Um, and it could also help with marketing, recruiting, business development, and other external efforts if there's a, if there's a public awareness of a company's DEI program. And it may help lower the risk of uh, 
liabilities some employers feel if they have a DEI program in place, that will make them less subject to a discrimination type claim because they're viewed as being a more aware type of workplace. Um, they're also seen as being more open to different backgrounds of their employees. So let's break out each component and talk about them of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Let's talk about those individually. So starting with diversity, what is diversity? So it's the existence of variety basically in the workplace. So again, that's things like age, ethnicity, physical capabilities, are you a veteran or not? Are you single, married, do you have kids? Um, where are you from? Um, what are your interests? What are your background? What are your ideas? Those are some of the factors that are looked at with the diversity element of a DEI workplace uh, program. It's reported that diversity may have a direct effect on strategic planning, resource allocation, things along those lines. The more aware of an employer is of things like diversity, they may try to allocate their strategic plans in that direction. The thought is, again, as we discussed just previously, is if you've got diversity in the workplace, you might have a, you might have a broader spectrum of ideas and that might lead to increased success for your business. We're gonna jump ahead to the I, to inclusion, next. So inclusion means you provide a work environment as an employer um, that welcomes, values, engages, hears, involves, and respects employees of all backgrounds. So again, you bring in that uh, broadly background workforce under the D portion diversity, and then under I, the inclusion part of it, you want to uh, make sure that they feel welcome in the workplace and also provide opportunities for all employees to make contributions, have professional growth, reach their potential. Basically, it means that if you've got this type of program in place, you wanna be sure that employees of all background feel included with work and uh, the things that the company is, is working on. Okay, now on to equity. So if you think back, again, we're in that time frame of up to about 30 years ago when we started hearing about diversity and inclusion. And then uh, that was the original um, phrase, DI, or the original program was a DI program. Much more recently, the E, equity, has been added um, into the equation. Um, equity, from a legal standpoint, depending on how a program is implemented, depending on how a DEI program is implemented, D, the E in the DEI, equity, could create more risk for an employer than the diversity and, the, and inclusion, the D and the I. So, so what is equity? Well, equity focuses on making sure applicants and employees of different backgrounds and those in protected classes achieve the same outcomes. So that's important to think of. Equity means the same outcome for everybody. Um, it's different than equality. Now, equality has been enshrined in federal uh, state and local employment laws, we call them EEO laws, for decades. Equality has been around forever. And equality looks at whether applicants and employees were treated consistently within an employer's hiring processes, promotion processes, things along those lines. So equality focuses on the opportunities provided. And again, that's decades old law. Equity is the new one, and that focuses on outcome um, and that's where we're going to expand on that a little bit next so what's currently going on with equity well this has been in the news more recently due to challenges that have come up mainly in the academic setting which we'll talk about but could also be potentially extended to the business setting depending on some different factors but i'll just kind of give an overview to start off with. So with equity, some of the DEI programs have been uh, challenged. Again, uh, opportunity, equality is okay, but the quality of outcomes is where things get sticky. Um, DEI programs, the equity part promoted 
um, promoted outcomes based on someone's sex, race, national origin, or other protected characteristics. That's where programs have been challenged. Um, as noted on the screen here, uh, in 2023, the Supreme Court of the United States, that's SCOTUS, um, heard a case called Students for Fair Admissions. Um, it was against Harvard University and the University of North Carolina. The Supreme Court in that case held that those universities' race-conscious admission system must be invalidated under the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment. The court said, you can't use race-based quotas. You can't give preferences to some people based on race by excluding those of other races. Um, they relied on basically the existing precedent, as we've been talking about, of the uh, equality laws, meaning equal opportunity. Um, that is what's more okay than trying to uh, guarantee a, an outcome. Now, this case, the college admission case, doesn't directly address workplace DEI programs. However, um, ever since that case was decided last year by the Supreme Court, a number of um, elected officials, including state attorneys general, governors, uh, private groups, and individuals are making arguments to extend the reasoning of the Supreme Court um, in that case outside of just the academic setting into the business setting. Um, some shareholders based on this case have also challenged um, the companies where they hold shares saying that DEI programs, specifically the equity component, has caused a uh, reduction in their interest, reduction in their financial returns. Um, a prominent case involves Starbucks um, in 2022, where a bunch of shareholders sued them over their DEI program, claiming the equity portion hurt the company financially. Now that case was in uh, state court in the state of Washington. So the company came out on top on that one. Their program was allowed to go forward. But if you're in a more business friendly state that's not Washington state, you could have a different outcome as an employer depending on the, the components of your program. Another issue that's been coming up more recently has been so-called reverse discrimination claims, where if there's a workplace diversity, equity and inclusion DEI program, the equity portion is challenged um, if some people are favored based on their race and sex over others. It gets into kind of a gray area and it also depends a lot on where you're located to see if those types of challenges will consider. So that's that's just a quick summary of some of the legal landscape on what's going on with the E portion of DEI programs. So how do you deal with this? Well, you wanna be aware of your legal risks at all times. So Looking at diversity of, of your workforce is allowed. You know, looking at you know different backgrounds, ideas, things like that, that's fine. Um, inclusion, also permissible. Making people feel that they can participate in all aspects of your company, that's fine. Equal employment opportunity, that's EEO, is always okay. So that's the equality of the opportunities presented to everybody, not engineering outcomes. Um, consistent policies and practices that are open to everyone in hiring and employment, EEO, that's okay, that's been around for 60 years. Where you need to be more careful, again, is with equity. Um, there's many differing viewpoints and kind of shifting legal positions on this. For example, the current federal administration, their Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, EEOC, says that DEI programs are fine, but in other states, as we just recently discussed, many elected officials are less permissive with DEI programs. Um, in fact, some state attorneys general are taking action against private programs. Um, so that particular part of it, the equity part, can bring some legal liability depending on a number of factors, but one being geography. So how can we help you with DEI? Well, in MyHR Council, we can advise you on DEI issues. Um, we can consider the current state of federal law affecting DEI. We can look at court cases and any state or local rules as applicable. As noted, it's a gray area with equity. 
Um, this year is also an election year, a general election across the whole country. So that is going to potentially be a hot button issue depending on where you're located. So watch for or listen for any changes or any people talking about the equity piece of DEI. We can also discuss best practices with you, what are acceptable, what actions push the edge. We can provide a DEI policy for you if needed. And the other thing that we can help you do is we can examine risk. If you're a client of ours and you send in a ticket, you've got a question on a policy that you have in place regarding DEI. We can look at the rules or court actions in your area and provide advice generally on what to do. Really what it comes down to is if you have a very conservative approach, as long as employers don't use protected characteristics like race, sex, national origin, or ethnicity when making employment decisions, they are free to have a more diverse culture, a more inclusive culture, they can break down barriers, but you just have to be careful with the equity piece where you're looking to make everybody's outcome be the same. Thanks everyone for joining us today. Um, we try to make your life easier as a business client by providing answers that you can rely on. We look forward to uh, providing you with additional information in our upcoming webinars in the future. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you.